Hey guys, what's up? It's Derek and today I wanted to talk to you guys about a new keyboard and mouse that I just picked up. Uh, I've been looking to build a new gaming setup, a new live streaming and gaming PC, uh, and I've been saving up to do so. With that said, while I've been saving up over the holidays, I got a couple Amazon gift cards and thought, with the gift cards, maybe I could get a new mouse and keyboard to get started before I built my new system since I was having some issues with the current mouse and keyboard that I had. So with that said, let's jump into today's video. A review of the Red Dragon K556 RGB keyboard and the Red Dragon M711 FPS Edition Game and Mouse. Okay guys, before we jump into today's video, I just want to point out that I stream on Twitch. If you're interested in checking out my live stream, you can find it by going to the link below, typing in omgitsderek.tv. Link always in the description. Alright guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the Red Dragon K556 keyboard and the Red Dragon M711 FPS Game & Mouse as I said there in the intro of the video. So like I said, I've been working on saving up to build a new gaming slash streaming PC. I wanna go all out with this new system. Uh, so it's taken me quite some time to save up the funds to do so. Uh, however, as I said, during the holidays, was blessed enough by some different people to receive gift cards, naturally for Amazon. And while they were sitting there in my account, I was trying to decide what should I spend them on? And I've been having some issues with my current mouse and keyboard, both uh, Corsair uh, gaming mouses and keyboards. Um, some of the buttons had quit working and I thought, well, maybe I can use this money to upgrade those and then they would carry over to my new system when I built that. I like quality things, but I like getting the best quality I can get for the best price. Sometimes this bites you in the butt because uh, you end up trying to get something a little cheaper and it ends up sucking compared to the name brand product that you could have just bought. However, I will say right off the bat, if you watch nothing else of this video, this mouse and keyboard, the build quality for the price, what you get is fucking fantastic. Like I said, I've been using this mouse and keyboard for about a month now and I am obsessed with it. I will say this is my first mechanical keyboard. It does not have cherry red switches, which is what a lot of people like. Instead, it has brown switches. They're also made by a different company. They're kind of their own custom-made switches. Uh, however, they feel great. I do a lot of gaming, but I also do a lot of content creation, and I also do a lot of work on my computer for my normal nine to five job. So brown switches tend to be in between gaming switches, which are red switches, and in between blue switches, which are for like typing and things like that. So they kind of fall in the middle. Uh, it's a it's a good trade-off between the two different types. So I love the brown switches, how the keyboard feels, how it sounds, the clicks of it is satisfying. As I said, this is my first mechanical keyboard. Even though the Corsair set that I had, it cost quite a bit of money. In fact, I think I paid about a hundred bucks for that combo, which was more than this system, and it wasn't mechanical. I also love the fact that it's RGB. Some people, you know, they think the RGB is going too excessive, you know, it's too much, it's everything's RGB now. Personally, I love it. I don't mind it. I like being able to change the colors. I like being able to kind of have the different flows. When I build my new PC, I'm planning on doing RGB. I like color options. I like that I can set it to a solid color of any color I want. I like that I can have it do rainbows of colors. I'm obsessed. I like it. The first thing I'll say is when I pulled this out of the box, the first thing I noticed was how heavy this keyboard is. This thing is made from aluminum, from metal. It is a high quality keyboard. What got me interested in Red Dragon was that I'd seen their products before on Amazon and stuff, and they always had really high reviews, especially for the price. Just to give you an example, this keyboard on Amazon sells for about $59.99 normal price. That's what I paid for it, but I've seen this keyboard in the past go on sale multiple times, all the way down to the $40 mark. The mouse, $29.87 on Amazon, and again, same thing, I've seen this mouse go on sale quite often. 
Like I said, it's high quality, the build. It feels great. I love the fact that it's mechanical and that it's metal and it's heavy duty, solid construction. So let me tell you a little bit of the specs about the keyboard and stuff. Again, as I said, it's brown switches. It has your normal gaming keyboard type stuff like anti-ghosting, which means you can press as many different keys as you want at the same time and they'll all get registered. If you've been a gamer for any amount of time, you know how important that is. Some just cheap keyboards on the internet you'll get and if you're trying to you know, hold shift to run, using W to go forward, trying to hit control or space to jump, whatever, you know, hit F to melee and you start hitting like three or four buttons at the same time, some very cheap keyboards just won't do it. This one, no worries with that, has anti-ghosting, which is pretty common on most, you know, keyboards that aren't at the very cheapest end. It's 104 standard keys, which I love. Some gamers don't care about the number pad on the right side. Again, because I use this also for productivity, uh, the number pad's huge to me. You know, when I'm doing stuff like our budget for the family and stuff, uh, when I'm filling out invoices and proposals for work, it's great having that number pad over there instead of having to type everything with the numbers above the normal letter keys. Uh, so big plus to me, I love the fact that it's 104 keys. There is an option of basically the same keyboard without the number pad if that's something you don't want. As I said, the frame of the keyboard, fully aluminum. It's great build quality. I love the fact that it seems like it's so well put together that it's sturdy. Isn't going to break anytime soon. Definitely, I feel like, you know, and, and it's hard to tell, but I'm just, you know, impressions, it feels like it's a keyboard that's going to last for quite some time. The USB is gold plated, which just helps with the connection between everything. It's always better to have, you know, gold plated USB versus non gold plated, at least from my understanding. Uh, it does not have a braided cable. I, I wish it did. The mouse does, but the keyboard doesn't. Kind of makes sense, I guess, you know, when they're, you know, because they're selling it for cho so cheap, they got to put the money where it matters. And I guess with a keyboard, most of the time you're not moving your keyboard around which means that your, you know, your cord for your keyboard is not moving around that much. Whereas with the mouse, it is constantly moving. Uh, so the braided helps with that so that it doesn't fray and things like that. The keys are rated both on the keyboard, each different key, as well as all the buttons on the mouse. They're both rated for 50 million key presses, which means that, again, this thing is designed to last for quite some time. And I don't see you, you know, wearing it out anytime soon. One nice feature is that included in the kit with the keyboard is you get a keycap removal, just a little plastic tool, nothing fancy, but a keycap removal as well as a key switch removal tool. So all the keycaps and switches in this thing are removable and they actually give you a box of six additional switches, which kind of crazy how they do this, but they give you or I'm sorry, eight additional key switches. And they give you two browns, two reds, two blues, and two blacks. They say that they give you all the different types so that you can replace some of them and see how the different types feel, which is cool, I guess. Uh, however, I don't really see somebody buying a keyboard, trying out the different colors, deciding they like them, and then ordering a bunch of the key presses to replace. Instead, they would probably order a keyboard that already has those switches. Um, so I kind of wish they would have just gave you all brown, which is what's on the keyboard. In case you have them go out, you have extras to replace. You do get two browns, so if you have, you know, two key, press, you know, key switches go out at any time, you do have two to replace, you know, which the key presses can be used in any of them. And again, they give you the tools to remove them, which is a nice little touch. The keycaps are double shot injected molded uh, caps. That means that the uh, lettering and the symbols on the keycaps are not going to wear off on you. It means that they're going to stick around forever. Again, it just testifies to the durability that was put into creating this product and that they expect it to be something that lasts you for quite some time. The keyboard has 18 different backlight modes as well as the ability within the software to customize each individual key to whatever color you want it to be. So for example, you could set up your WASD buttons to be one color and the rest of your board to be another. Uh, just that way, you know, maybe in the darker sum, it's easier to find those keys. 
Uh, but you can basically do whatever you want or choose from one of the 18 you know, default packages they have, which include solid colors, which include kind of rainbow effects and strobe effects and pulsing effects, different things like that. I will say the software is definitely not as polished as, you know, something like, you know, Corsair's software or any of the, you know, name brand, you know, the higher brand keyboards that we all know. Um, however, it gets the job done. I don't have any issues with it. It's just a little less polished than some of the other options out there. Again, for the savings though, I think it's a really great deal. Um, again, I'm loving it. After a month of using it, I'm planning on keeping it. I see no reason to, to send it back to get any of the name brand. I'm really impressed by this Red Dragon you know, stuff. And I definitely see myself willing to buy more of their products in the future. In terms of the mouse, they have two versions. They have the Red Dragon M711, and then they have the version I got, as I said earlier, the M711 FPS. The biggest difference between the two, they're pretty much the same mouse, except for the sensor inside of them. The sensor in the M711 FPS is the PixArt PMW3360. This is one of the best sensors that is made for gaming mices. So for the extra, I think the price difference was like eight to $10 for the M711 versus the M711 FPS. And again, the quality difference in the sensors, if you're going with one of these mouses, even if you're trying to save money, for God's sakes, do whatever it takes to come up with the extra 10 bucks and get the 711 FPS over the normal 711, in my humble opinion. Again, as I mentioned, same as with the keyboard, all the buttons on the mouse are rated for 50 million key presses. That's a hell of a lot. You should have no problem with this thing wearing out on you anytime soon. It has up to a thousand hertz pull-in rate. The default it's set at is 500. Uh, most people don't know, if you crank that up to a thousand, you do get better response time in terms of the milliseconds. I think 1000 hertz equals one millisecond, if I'm quoting that correctly which I believe I am. Uh, however, it does use a slightly little bit more resources of your computer the higher you have your pulling rates. So I have left mine at 500 hertz and have not noticed any issue with that. I'm also not a professional FPS player, nor do I play very many FPSs at all. So if you're a big FPS gamer, it might be worth the system hit uh, in order to turn that up to 1,000. Uh, but with my current setup, as I said, I am looking to upgrade between streaming, between gaming, it's pretty much pushing its limits. Uh, so I don't wanna chew up the extra resources personally. It also claims it does up to 24,000 DPI. However, from my understanding, the sensor in it does not actually do that much. They're exaggerating a little bit. However, with just the buttons on the mouse itself, the DPI buttons, you can adjust it from 1,000 DPI up to 12,000 DPI through five different modes. And it kind of goes, it's like 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, you know, 8,000, 12,000. Don't quote me on those numbers, uh, but you know, it just goes in increments up from 1,000 at the lowest up to 12,000. And again, in the software, while it's not as polished as the others, it does perform every function you need. So you can actually adjust what each of those are. So maybe you want the very lowest setting to be 2,000, the next one to be 5,000. You can change all that in the software so that it goes to whatever DPI setting you have, and you can have something extremely high and crazy, uh, you know, up to the 24,000. Although again, from my understanding, from other you know reviews I had seen when, when looking to purchase this and from reviews on Amazon and stuff, it doesn't look like this sensor actually goes up to 24,000 DPI. Nonetheless, it's one of the best sensors on the market. You know, it's used in most of the name brand gaming mice, higher end gaming mice, uh, especially for FPS gaming mices. Uh, so I would not worry too much about the claim that 24,000 and it not actually hitting that. Also, as I said, it does have the braided cable, unlike the uh, keyboard. Braided cables just help with making sure that it doesn't fray as much and just dirt long longevity of the cable so that it's not cracking, breaking, anything like that. Braided lasts longer. That's, that's literally the only benefit of it, although it's a great benefit, uh, but it doesn't do anything else besides that. I will say the, the mouse is a little light for my liking, just a little bit. I have gotten used to it. And the other issue is 
I'm actually left-handed for most games and stuff. Some games I play right-handed. Most games I play left-handed. So it's always hard for me to find a mouse that, you know, is specifically made for left-handers that's actually any good or that I actually enjoy. Um, so I always end up using a right-hand mouse and just finding one like this M711 where it's basically the same no matter what hand you have it in. However, with that said, I will say I had to turn off the two side buttons uh, as when I'm using it left-handed, there is just enough of a curve that I was constantly hitting those buttons uh, with my uh, ring finger. Uh, in my right hand, I never have an issue with those buttons because that's my thumb there. I can keep it out of the way. With my left hand, I was hitting the button, so I had to just disable them and not use them. But it does have seven programmable buttons that you, again, can program in the software to basically do whatever you want, use in-game, whatever. I don't typically use a bunch of buttons on my mouse to begin with. So it didn't bother me to disable those two. And outside of that, I have no issues using this as a left-hand mouse if there's any other left-handed people out there curious about that. So again, all together for about 90 bucks, in my opinion, you can get a great mechanical keyboard and game and mouse that rivals any of the more expensive $150 to $200 combos that you would get from any of the big players in the field. Uh, really, really well done, Red Dragon. I love this hardware, definitely sticking with it for a while, and you definitely got yourselves a new customer in the future. And just FYI to you guys out there, this video is not sponsored. I bought all this equipment myself. Um, I love it. It's, it's great. It honestly is my favorite keyboard and mouse purchase I have ever made. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Leave me a like. It helps me out tremendously. If you're not subscribed, do that by hitting the red subscribe button. And until next time, peace out, everybody. Uh, uh, uh.